Hello, welcome to TA Made Simple. And with me is transactional analysis, Bob Cook. Mm. And he talks about uh, it, kind of aspects of transactional analysis, the, the theory, make it simple, make it straightforward. And we're going to talk about the first session in TA, the opening of the curtains of the therapeutic theatre, Bob. <laughs> that's, abs that's absolutely, I mean, like, uh, that's absolutely true. And if you're a transactional analyst, you have a particular model in your mind. If you're a Gestalt psychotherapist, you would. If you're an existential psychotherapist, if you're a client-centered, you'd have a model. You know, the client-centered world would probably be Rogers. You know, then the Gestalt world, it might be Pearl's idea of, uh, you know, uh, contact. If he was... So we have different models. Now, in the transaction analysis world, the PAC model, which I've alluded to in this series, the parent-adult-child model, is the model of personality which we will draw on. So in the first session, once you said hello, of course, and the person sit down, if I ask them what they want, and they start talking to you, you're going to be thinking about how much energy the person spends in different parts of the self. Mm. So for example, how much energy they come from when they're coming from their parent part of themselves, which is to do with beliefs, the shoulds, the oughts, the must do mm. in the world how much energy they spend staying in the here and now, which will be the adult, and how much energy they spend being stuck, if you like, or in their younger self, which would be, could be many different ages, but I'm just gonna say the younger self, which is a child ego state. Because most problems people come with is when they are actually coming energetically from different parts of themselves, which aren't centered in the here and now so they're attempt attempting to solve problems from either the past or the future mm. so you start as in the, in the first session a ta therapist or somebody who's coming from that vague will be thinking about where which part of the self is the person coming from and how does that you know what does that process say in terms of the pro problems they've come with mm. It's interesting you talk about because in the last um, the last episode we mm. talked about uh, ego grams, which is a way of yeah. measuring the energy within mm. the ego. Um, mm. So you, you so you meet your client for the first time, you've mm. said hello, you got past hello, you've presumably done some form of contract, mm. and then you're asking the client, you know, what brought you here, and mm. as you're listening, you're assessing mm. where they are. are. They are they in the past? with issues that falling over in the past or they're stumbling into an unwritten future yeah which is usually dictated by some type of parent whether it's an overwhelming nurturing parent which is sort of uh, infantilizing the person uh called the negative nurturing parent whether it's from the critical parent which um usually is defining them so they come usually from a child oriented place so it's about looking at the mediation if you like between the different parts of the self and how they get stuck in one of those uh those places and and how that doesn't help them today give me an example of someone who was maybe stuck in the past how may they present what would you see okay somebody somebody comes to you and they say what I'd like helping from you is um, I find it very hard to be myself when I go to interviews. Right. So when I go to interviews, I find myself uh, being very childlike. Or I find myself um, uh, stumbling over my words. Or I find myself thinking that the people who are interviewing me are out to trap me. Mm. or they're out to trick me or they're going to actually ask me questions which make me feel that I'm stupid and uh, I suppose you might call that slightly paranoid or not but mm. when that happens I feel like I'm a um, 13 year old um, being hyper vigilant around my parents yeah and 
I find it hard to suit myself in that process and I get stuck in the past and I'm unable to think clearly and feel very confused and I really want you to help me be clear um, so that I can actually pass my interviews right okay so that's the example of someone who's in the in the in the presenting past what about mm. someone who's stu who's stumbling over an unwritten future how, how may they present hyper vigilance so somebody, oh. somebody who comes and says you know um, I, I, I find myself always trying to work out how someone's going to be so in relationships you know I've only had three or four relationships my last one only lasted about six weeks and the reason it is is because I am always always hyper vigilant on the edge trying to work out what's going to happen in the future what's how they're going to be and you know I often catastrophize when I'm sure there's nothing to catastrophize about but I, I am stuck in this hyper vigilant try to work out the future, try to work out what they're thinking, feeling or being. And, it, and I go nowhere and I find it very hard to trust people. Right. That's, that's, that's the, yeah, so that's a really interesting thing. And which, which part of the ego state would that come from? That would come from the child, mm -hmm. but it's an attempt to work out the future in a safe, predictable way. Ah. Oh. So they are still in the past, if you like, but it's an attempt to work out the future. Yeah. And I suppose within that, part of that could be trying to work out what a parent would want. Yes, absolutely. So again, it, well, again it's really from the past, but, I, but they are attempting to work out what the parent want, wants, so their future is different. Yes. Yeah, so it's interesting, once you explain that, um, I'm sure there'll be a lot of people watch this, including me, who go, hmm, I do that. <laughs> yeah. So the, the most common uh, aspect in the first session is to work out, like we are doing now, which part, which ego states they're coming from, and to think, uh, this is the next piece that's really important, how the past is affecting the present here. Yeah, yeah. So in other words, how the, the decisions that they've made about themselves and the other people, yeah, influences them how they are in the present. Mm. That's a really important, you know, aspect of all psychotherapy. But in trans transaction analysis, there's a name for this, and that's script theory. Oh. So we talked about this before, but it's the idea that we create our own life plan which we're going to call script here, early in our childhood, in reaction to what's going around them, usually the significant other people or parents, you create your own uh, life plan, how the world is, how other people are, how you are, make central decisions, and you manipulate or put it onto the present to get the same outcome, which usually is the problem that they come with. Yes, so you yes. think ego states and you think script, mm. which what it, and in that, so you're looking for the enactments of how the past via scripts, if you like, like I've just explained, gets put on to the present and isn't helping them in any life enhancing way. So already, already you've really outlined the, in the initial interview, I guess, the structure you you build you built a, a structure of of what how where the therapy but which direction the therapy may go in and the interventions that a therapist would would use yeah so you might towards the end by the way wrap it up like you know in terms of what's happening you know what's what the problem is and it's usually the past affecting the present and what your ego states there and you might not get through the, all this in one session but you usually wrap it up 10 minutes before so you don't leave them stuck in their parent or child, that they're the right age they should be because they I mean, might be going outside the door and getting into their car. And you don't want them getting their car, a 10-year-old. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that, yeah, that, yeah. You're right. The important of this in terms of two ego yeah. states is that we make sure that they're coming from their here and now by making sure they're grounded. So you usually need about 10 minutes to be able to mm. 
to, a, to do an overview, round it up, and you might even say, you might even that 10 minutes talking about um, the more specific contacting. The most important thing is when you do an overview and wrap it up and say where you're going to go next time or however you're going to do it, then you make sure that they're in their adult ego state in the here and now and not stuck in some child or parent process. Yes, and that, that can happen, you know, certainly with clients with trauma. Mm. Where oh. I've, seen, I've seen that happen in my practice where you all of a sudden realise that, that the, the 50-year-old person sat in front of you is actually chronologically 50 years old, but actually emotionally is eight or three. That's right. That's right. That. Uh, and well, uh, that's absolutely true. And also that they don't get stuck in their parent ego state, so they don't go outside the room in a very angry parent uh, uh, telling themselves off, or in fact shouting at other people outside the yes. um, you know, outside the room. Yeah. So it's really important that in the overview and wrapping up, which should take at least five minutes, if you want ten, you 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 allow them to come back to the here and now and if you can't and if you feel they are stuck you direct them by um adult questions yes what what kind of questions would those be bob well it wouldn't be i'll tell you what it wouldn't be okay it wouldn't be tell, how are you feeling no you wouldn't ask emotional questions no you're going to ask cognitive questions yes yes so, tell me what have you got from the session today yes so you thinking bring questions here and now responses here and now, thinking questions yeah yeah and what will you take away from this session thinking questions and then you might move to admin questions like okay what time are we gonna and you to get your diary out and you work out the sessions and everything else and that will bring them back into the here and now you do not ask them feeling questions yeah 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 and i i, I you know it's interesting because i come from a humanistic um, mm. background and I, I would certainly end my session exactly the same way. Yeah, yeah. As, yeah. as, a, as a grounding and returning to, uh, sometimes I used to, when I taught, I used to call it returning to the world. So you, you, you might go through this roller coaster of different, yeah. different emotional ages in the therapy room. But yeah. as you come to the end, and you're absolutely right, Bob, you know, the safe, the safe way of working is to bring them back to, the reality that they're going to be engaging in when they walk out of your door. <laughs> yeah, so they're in TA model, they're in the adult ego state. Yeah, yeah. So the first session, you might be looking at ego states, the fragmented tripartite, you know, different parts of the self and how they are at war, for example. You may help them look at how they are bringing forward uh, ideas from the past, which doesn't help them in the present. And you may do some contracting. However, in terms of safety and protection, they need to be in their adult, just as you've just said there, when they leave the door. Absolutely, and I think, I think that's a lesson to any therapist, really, mm. no matter what modality mm. you practice, is that you cannot have clients leave in, in a, I mean, sometimes that does happen. Sometimes you will get clients who just go, and, and no matter what you do, they, they're very distressed, but, by by having a strategy as you could bring the session to an end of, mm. you know, of safety and security, um, yeah, they leave in yeah. a place where in, they well, can manage themselves. That's right. You're right. It's not, a, you know, te ra I'll give you two tips. One, all the, you know, whether it's custodial or whatever it is, you finish 10 minutes, you start wrapping up 10 minutes before the hour or 55 minutes or 50 minutes whatever you work from uh that's that's a really good one another one of which i i like um is you 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 do your admin at the end i'm not talking about you know some people like taking money at the beginning fine but i'm talking about diary form yeah yeah yeah, yeah. At the end and that will bring them into the adult yeah 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 valuable insights bob into that first session from the from the observational skills that the therapist draws on that links to theory and then and then links into questioning curiosity intervention and then right at the end um uh, uh, every session to come to check. the end, check and bring them back into the adult ego state yeah. just yeah. just a bit of a master class really in um, in in 
incompetent practice, Bob. That's right, especially in the first session. And I think with um, you and I know, know whether you're you know, a seasoned professional in a way, but certainly for trainees, they need to leave themselves five or ten minutes to wrap this all up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if there's a takeaway from that and anybody's listening, maybe a trainee's listening, you know, think about what Bob said about, you know, mm. using factual information right at the end and and don't do what or don't make the rookie mistake i've seen lots of therapists do when i've been training them where they've come to them they've got is there anything else you want to talk about oh oh, <laughs> oh, oh god did you hear my sign of a groan there we also, you know and it is a it is a sign of kindness yeah. and concern but as i say well what happens if they start talking what what are you going to do well, you you have well. Uh, well, I won't go down that road because that is a real rookie, real rookie error. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there we have it. Um, you know, the opening session in TA. If you're a, if you're a CBT therapist, maybe, or if you're a person centered therapist, really interesting comparative information here. If you're doing an assignment, um, and also some generalised information for any modality how to ground the client so they feel safe in the world or safer in the world when they go out. So Bob Cook, thank you very much. Okay.